Let's learn about text and types. So the first thing that you have to do is to download all the files that you're going to find down in the link below this video. So pause this video and download all the files and I'm going to be here waiting for you. Ready? Pause. Let's go. Now, we're going to use the type tool. Remember that each time you want to use it, you need to define a frame or a text box. I'm going to do it right here. The second step is going to write down the word or words that you want to, to write. So I'm going to select greetings because this is a postcard. Now, when you see this like tilting, it's telling you that you can continue writing or that you are able to select it and then transform it, okay? The O below is telling me that this font is an open type font. It means that it can be uh, used in Mac and PC. The second step is going to be to understand what is this frame. Well, this frame is going to tell me, for example, if I want to rotate the text in a specific angle, you just have to come to the corner. If you press and move, for example, the corners, you're going to be able to transform and edit the size of the frame. That means that it's going to start here and it's going to end here. And the one that we have right here is going to tell me that all the text that you see is inside or placed inside this, fr um, this frame. Okay, so what are we going to do? As this is a frame, I am not able to see any characteristic of the type, right? So if I want to edit, I have to double click it so I can have it selected. Now I have the option to change the font, the size, and for example, the alignment. If I don't like to use the top menu, you can use the one you have at the right, like I do. In case you don't have it, go to window and then select type character. For the shortcut is command T if you have a PC, a Mac, sorry, or control T if you have a PC. Now you're able, for example, to change the font and to change the size. The first thing is to select the font. I'm going to select this one, this one, impact. I'm going to change the size and here I have it. Now, what about if this happened? Don't panic. The software is telling me that the, with this um, white reddish box, is telling me that the text is hidden and is not able to be seen on this size of this frame. So what can you do? You can undo, for example, Command Z, or you can reduce the size of the font, okay? Now, if you want to change the color, we already seen that you can come to the top menu, for example, and then select paper if, in case you want it in white. But let's see another way to do it. Another way to do it is using properties. Properties is going to be really helpful because it's going to have, depending on the element that you have selected, all the options that you can do with it. Now, if you don't have properties open like I do, come to the top menu, window, and then select properties. I'm going to select the text and then I'm going to change the fill color. The color is going to be the, the, depending on the colors that I have already here on Swatch. I'm going to select paper that is going to be white. Okay, so I have it like this. In case I need to add extra text right here just below and the writer haven't sent, for example, the main idea, so the main text, what can I do? I'm going to define a text box like I'm doing right now. Take a look how the green lines appear. These are called smart guides and they're going to be helpful because they're going to help me to align the document, for example, between elements. I'm going to select the text. I'm going to select maybe this one. Select the one that you have in your computer. I'm going to change the size to eight, okay? And then I'm going to the top menu, type, fill with placeholder text, okay? Remember that this is called Loren Ipsum. It's a texto simulado. It's not real, but it has like the shape of a complete paragraph because it has capital letters. 
it has commas, it has dots and things like that. Now you can change it. Now I'm going to change it into white. Remember that if you want to select it, you have to double click it. And then I'm going to select it in white and change the alignment. Okay. I'm going to say change the alignment into the center. So I already have here um, a text that probably is going to change. Now imagine that you already received the file from the writer and you are going to place it here. So you can delete this one or, for example, you can define the grid and say, hey, it's going to come from this area to this area. Maybe I'm going to place it here. Some rulers and guides, you already know how to do this. I'm going to erase it and I'm going to define another text box. I'm going to do it here using the grid. Then I'm coming to the top menu file, place. I'm going to select the file that you already have to. Remember that you just download these two files and you're going to click open. The information that you're going to have here belongs to the file that you have in Word. That means that it's going to keep the characteristics that you have in Word. But you are going to be able to change it to the size and to the format of the um, font that you need. For example, in case of 10, I'm going to put it in 6 or 8. Let's see. I believe that this one is going to be fine. Now, I'm going to be able to change and do a specific format to this text. I'm going to change this into white color instead of black because you know white is uh, is better for reading over red. I'm going to select then white. I have it like this and I want to find out how can I change and edit the separation that I have between lines for example or how can I adapt the words. So. I'm going to move something um, in the character window. Please open it. The first step is that first you have to define at least six. Five, I believe, is, is too small for us to read it, OK? The first box is for defining the size. The second box, the one that you have right here, is for, for defining the leading. Leading is the distance between two lines. You can make it smaller. When you have a smaller number, you're going to get this. If you have a higher number, you're going to make them separate, OK? And they usually have the auto option. In my case, I believe it's going to be 8. It's going to look better. But that's my personal taste. Please select the number that you believe is better, OK? What we have here is called kerning. Kerning is a separation that you have between words. And we have tracking. Tracking is the separation that you have between the letters and the words. Let's see an example. Um, how about if I want to put the African proverb right here at the top? What should I do? Well, I'm going to select all the text. I'm coming to the tracking area. And if I want it to fit to the top, I'm going to start from the lower numbers, minus 5. Hmm, you see that it goes to the top minus 10, and here you have it. All the letters are going to get together. Let me get closer so you can see the difference. This is minus 10, and this is 0. Let's see, minus 10 and 0. They are more separated. So tracking is going to help me to put them a little bit closer, and it's going to help me, for example, in this case, to reduce the quantity of lines. So it was minus 10. How about if I use not negative numbers? Well, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to separate the distance between the words and the letters, and I'm going to have something like this. So the most common way of using it, tracking, is this too. Okay? It has to be easy to read. Remember, text is for reading. Now, if I already have it like this, Remember that you can adapt it to the frame that you already made, so I can make it maybe a little bit um, bigger, the size of, um, of the font. So you already know how to use the tracking, the size, and the leading. What is this? Let me select African proverb. If you change 
hundred percent to this. You're changing the the looks, the scale in the vertical position of the word or the type. Okay. Usually you're going to deform the text. It's not exactly like the best thing to do, but you have it here available in case you need to use it. Okay. For having the perfect shape, it's always hundred percent. Wow. What is the following uh, options that we have below? Well, we have this one. Um, it's more easy if you are using, for example, formulas, or if you are going to have um, a note at the end of a paragraph. And uh, let's see, I'm going to write down here number three. So you can see you can move it from the line and you can even reduce it. For example, I'm going to put it here like this. Okay, this is how you can do it. And the other way that we can uh, transform a text, I'm going to select African proverb again, is the angle. You can change the angle. It's not converting it into something italic, it's just giving a little angle to the text. If you want to have the original, press zero, enter. So this is how you can use the text or type tool. Another thing that we can do using the type tool is the following. As you remember, we have seen how we can adapt to a path any text. I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm going to draw this line. Then I'm coming to the type tool in the toolbar and I'm going to select the one that says type on a path tool. The most important thing is that you need to click the line and you're going to have that little symbol just at the corner. So you can write down around the line. As you can see, we have the black arrow right here. We can select it and change it. I'm going to select another font. I'm going to select Arial, for example, around the line. And if I don't want to have this text, you know, over this line, because the line, I, I don't like it, just come to the top menu and place the non line on the stroke. Okay, around the line. I'm going to put it right here. Something that maybe is just happening to my file, but not in your file, is the following thing. I still have this box in red, and at the bottom I have something that is telling me and reminding me that I have an error. You see right here at below, it says, hey, you have an error. So it means that I have to open the frame, or maybe there is hidden text. In case there is no hidden text, as, I, as you can see, I just open it. Now it's in green. The software is going to be really helpful and it's going to tell you if you have an error or not. So it's really friendly. We already have these two. I'm going to do something else so you can understand how we can transform and adapt the text, especially when you have it in a paragraph. I'm going to reduce the size of this frame so I can have intentionally this red box. I'm going to get closer so you can have a, a look to it really close. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click this small box and this icon is going to appear. It is telling me that I can place the text in another area. I'm going to click, hold and make a box like this. So the text from, from here continues here. What I just did is like a continuation and a link from this to this. Okay, so if I erase, I don't know, a sentence right here, let's see, I'm going to erase this, it's going to adapt, okay? If I change it here, it's not going to happen anything here because it's the end of the paragraph. So you can change and adapt the paragraph in case you want to have, for example, two columns or you want to make it different, you can come, click it right here, you're going to see that icon again and then release it with the mouse wherever you want. Remember that you can adapt and release the um, text frame wherever you want. And here you have the greenings. Now, let me select this one. I'm going to cut it, Command X. I'm going to the next one, and I'm going to place it here, around the line. Remember that this is a postcard. It's an exercise for you to do the practice. Well, we already know then how to use the type tool. See you on the next video. Bye.